And this is Prime Time News on AYV Television and Radio 101.7 FM. I am Mayana Maria Bangua. Well, let's begin with the headlines for tonight. Chief Minister apologizes and assures the public of expedient solution to current energy crises. Police say investigations on alleged killing of Captain John Conte is ongoing. We know the fear We uh, Captain John Conte. And so, when the day pass, the police will be able to go all out. It's having the eyes. And citizens share views on speakership battle in parliament. I say I'm a favor city because you get vast experience. Because since you don't run ECOWAS, when a big body is South West Africa, I believe you will get more express back for running a country like this. So now for the full news with Mayan Amaria Bangura. Well, in our first story for tonight, the Chief Minister of Sierra Leone, Dr. David Moyne Nasenge, has assured the public that they will work hard and solve the current energy crisis in the country in a sustainable, reliable, and permanent way, he says. He further noted they will deliver on their promises. The Chief Minister made this disclosure on his Facebook page earlier today after the country's capital was plugged in darkness for over five days. The Electricity Distribution and Supply Authority, EDSA, has informed citizens about the challenge it faces to provide adequate el electricity to the Freetown network. Our reporter Isabangwa has more on the story. It's a day now since the country's capital Freetown was plunged into a darkness after the Electricity Distribution and Supply Authority Hedsa announced that it is grappling with technical difficulties at the Freetown 161 power station located at Kintom. The blackouts occurred between the hours of 5.30 p.m. and 6 o'clock p.m., leaving residents in the capital city without electricity. In a public notice issued shortly after the incident, Hedsa provided insight into the cause of the blackout. Following this notice, Chief Minister of Sierra Leone, Dr. David Moinina Senge, in his Facebook post, assures the public that the government is working relentlessly to solve these technical issues and they will fulfill their promises. Responding to this presser are some residents of Freetown who disclose the challenges currently result from the power outrage. Well, this never is shocking news to me because it never be a constraint, especially me, because one, the facility, some of the facilities are using a light charger for use. And right now, with the light now, they now the facility are using a just clipper, so they are charger, they go charger. And for this one, it don't be so, say, it really affect me business, really. Therefore, it really affect me business. For now, the lights they help a lot. Most of, like, me, me on cool reggae pharmacy, without lights, you need it for 100% because you get some merits in the way, you need for the other some temperature. You understand some cooling system, but now with the light are on and off, somebody even for sleep with her, like I mean, on my phone, my phone all day off. Now I don't want to go to my party and that me good charge. I did it in light song. I don't care so back when I feel like I come with light. There is no light, so that affects me so much. Ah, it affects me all as I say. I mean, yeah, you know, say God save, save, save. You understand? In Genesis, he talk that let there be light and there is light. Light na life, just like our turn alive. So it affects me all. But if at the end of the day, after this exercise, we all go get light, regular light, eh, then I mean, na, na, na sacrifice we all for make. Because you know the change no more without, you know, you know, suffer small. And the, you still release what we see from outside and say, the day power work on them, and very soon, then go give you light. Meanwhile, the chief minister further stated in his post that the government is sorry and they promise they will solve the perennial energy issue in a renewable and sustainable way. Issa Bangora, AYV News, Freetown. Now, Turkish company Kapawaship has agreed to resume partial supply of electricity to Freetown after it was reduced to 6 megawatts due to payment issues with the government. Now, both the company and the government have agreed to continue negotiations on payment by next week. In an official statement from Kapawaship earlier today, they expressed their commitment to work with the government to address the electricity challenge. Kapawaship had requested that the government pay about 27 million United States dollars, which corresponds to the overdue amount for their invoices 
from 2022 to 2023 out of the over $40 million in accumulated debt. Meanwhile, some residents of Freetown have confirmed on social media that electricity supply has returned to their homes and communities. Now away from that, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Corporations, Timothy Musakaba, has reiterated Sierra Leone's stance on Gaza-Israel war, calling for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. Minister Kaba added that they are supporting and will continue to support the efforts of the Secretary General UN agencies in getting aid into Gaza, and in the call for unconditional cease release of the hostages. Timothy further that the admission of Palestine to the membership of the United Nations may have been delayed as often in a regrettable period of injustice but cannot be denied. Whilst commenting on Israel and Iran, Timothy thanked the Secretary General for his proactive engagement and statement, noting that the emergency meeting of the Secretary Council on the 14th of April was necessary for the message of the de-escalation, adding that dialogue must continue to prevail on the parties to exercise maximum restraint and cease, for, cease hostilities. On Ukraine, he expressed the view that the territorial integrity of Ukraine must be expected within its internationally recognized borders, adding that now it is time to consider serious engagements that will lead to the part of dialogue and peaceful resolution. Finally, speaking on Sudan, he acknowledged the need to focus on various dimensions of the conflict, sensation of hostilities, adding that humanitarian situation and underscoring accountability. Minister Kaba was speaking at the United Nations Security Council press takeout at UN headquarters in New York where he highlights the journey of Sierra Leone to the UN Security Council and their active participation in voicing burning issues affecting the security of the state. Finally, away from that, after the alleged shooting of Captain John Conte, which led to his death, Sierra Leone Police Media One ACP Brahma Kamara has said that investigations are still ongoing to ascertain the full cause of the fatal incident. According to ACP Kamara, Captain John Conte was arrested between the 16th and 18th of April 2024, together with other ex-military personnel involved in the 23rd July and 23rd November 2023 subversion. George Batilo Powell has more. According to the Sierra Leone police, on the 23rd of July and 23rd of November 2023, Captain John Conte and some other ex-military personnel that are now under arrest were involved in subversion and they ended up escaping. These ex-military personnel were later declared wanted by the Sierra Leone police. After their arrest, on Wednesday, 17th April 2024, there was an alleged shooting of Captain John Conte which led to his death. Sierra Leone Police Head of Media, ACP Brema Kamara, asserted that investigations are still ongoing to ascertain the full cause of the fatal incident. And then, some of the people in the arrest, so maybe, I don't want to be on it, we've been involved about July 23 incident, and equal to November 23 incident. We all know, there's a fashion of the case. We, in the long way, we don't defend her. We, uh, Captain John Conte. And so, once they pass, the police be able to go all out. It's how they hide. It's just alone. So, we go to the police. Police, they try to make sure say it in a safe side. We go all together. That is the prospect to say, then we still did it in the union itself. Once we they take up the jury for safe custody, they attempt to escape. They hit the police officer, and then jump over the vehicle. They don't pursue them. And then at the end of the day, for the arrest them, or before they arrest them, because we disable them and shoot them. So then they have a security camp, a hospital, for we get treatment. And so why is it taken to the hospital? They pass away. So the police, they do thorough investigations. ACP Brahma further that all the other ex military personnel captured will be charged to court after gathering enough evidences. And then all the one in the way they all, on the basis of everything for come out as evidence, the police could take a decision for charge the matter of court based on the evidence. 
according to the Sierra Leone police intelligence, before the arrest, what these ex-military personnel planned was to start and end after the holy month of Ramadan, heading to the country's Independence Day, April 27, 2024. George Batilo Powell, AYV News Freetown. Abbas Chernobundu as Speaker of the House of Parliament. Now there has been speculation as to who should succeed him as the Speaker. The two names that have so far shown interest in the position is the current Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Solomon Sengepo Thomas, and the former Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament, Honorable Sidi Mohamed Tunis. Gauging the views of citizens as to who should succeed Abbas Bundu, Ronald Jomovia puts together this story. The resignation of the Speaker of the Sixth Parliament of the Second Republic of Sierra Leone, Honorable Dr. Abbas Chenabundu, came as a surprise to many. The speculation from social media was later confirmed by a press release from State House indicating the acceptance of his resignation by President Bio earlier this week. Elected on the 25th of April 2018 as Speaker, Right Honorable Dr. Abbas Chenabundu served for a period of six years. Following his resignation, there have been speculation as to who should succeed him with two prominent names from the ruling Salem People's Party popping up. Right Honorable Dr. Sidi Mohamed Tunis, the former Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament and the Deputy Speaker of the current Parliament, Honorable Solomon Singapore Thomas, are the two names around the corridors of Parliament. But who do citizens consider fit to succeed Abbas Bundu? Dr. Abbas Bundu didn't resign. I'm glad if he resign. Maybe he's getting a reason why make you resign. For me, to me, own view of points, like the man will say, where will I be the ECOWAS? Where will be running ECOWAS? I be city. I say I will favor city because he get vast experience. Because since he don't run ECOWAS, when a big body is in West Africa, I believe he will get more experience back for running a country like this for being a speaker. Experience where I don't watch Singapore and Mr. Tunis. I believe say, Mr. Tunis is capable at that particular position for let be Speaker of the House because he don't work in the ECOWAS. We see what he delivers in the ECOWAS. He de, de do some certain things that he really he de help through Saloon. So me, for me, if they give Mr. Tunis, he capable. Mengo prefer Singapore because I'm done there as deputy. So may he take the mountain now. I'm your opinion, Dandy. Health is wealth, and we all know that prevention is better than kill. That's why at Fadija General Services,